My informative speech um, is about how my grandfather became the very first Air Force One pilot. Um, my grandfather's name was William, and his middle name was Waffle. Uh, William Waffle Thomas. I have no idea why his middle name was Waffle to this day. <laughs> um, uh, something I'm going to talk about that I think is a little different is you'll notice a lot of things that happened in the story would never happen today. It's completely different. Uh, back then than it is now. Um, in 1952, my grandpa had just completed um, two dangerous missions for the U.S. Air Force. Um, he was a pilot in the Northern Air Raid over Germany, um, and he had flown uh, supplies to soldiers over the Burma, um, which was across the Himalayas into China, um, as the Americans fought the Japanese. And I guess it was a, one of those things where they, nobody else would do it, and he wanted it some other pilots. Um, it was a legendary mission that the pilots actually met in China every few years um, after they retired. They'd go over to China and meet. Um, they called themselves the Humpsters. Uh, but before he had ever been in history books, um, President Dwight Eisenhower uh, would need to run for president. Uh, while running as uh, president, um, Eisenhower was a professor at Columbia University. Um, President Truman, at the time, wanted Eisenhower, who had a lot of military experience, um, to go to Korea to see the situation firsthand. Um, they couldn't use uh, President Truman's plane because it was too recognizable back then. It was just, hey, this is the president's plane. There was a lot of camp there. I don't know if the president went anywhere. Um, so it was really hard to be kind of incognito. So if the president was going somewhere, they would take, you know, there would be flag memos and spare field memos. It would be a really big deal. Um, but this was a secret mission. Um, the Secretary of the Air Force uh, offered his plane and crew, um, and my grandfather was the co-pilot on that flight. And so in the middle of the night, uh, co-pilot William Waffle Thomas picked up Eisenhower um, in an airfield with uh, no idea and a lot of nervousness. Um, they gave the plane the call sign Air Force One, which is used to this day, and that was the very first time. Um, my grandfather was then uh, given eight years in the White House. Um, he was given an office at the White House, and he logged 300,000 miles uh, with the Commander-in-Chief, um, becoming uh, the first president to use a helicopter to get flown uh, from the White House to the airfield, whereas before, like I said, they were using a lot of fanfare and um, flags and, and limos and stuff like that. So when he started with Air Force One, um, they started using uh, a helicopter, and they also started using jets for the first time. Before that, they were using these old clunky planes, um, but he flew the first jet. Um, so eventually, becoming a colonel, um, he briefly flew for Nixon um, after Eisenhower's term was up. Um, but Eisenhower and him had become friends. They really were pretty close. Um, and eventually, my grandpa retired um, to Charleston, South Carolina, uh, where my mom's family lived until the colonel's passing at age 94. Um, he remarried, after my grandma passed away from Alzheimer's, he remarried his uh, neighbor. Um, and it, it was funny because it was on the Today Show because they were both 92. She was a pilot. He had, at the time, he was the oldest living presidential pilot. And somebody got word of it at the Today Show. So he went on the Today Show with his new bride and embarrassed her by making a comment about how they were still active. <laughs> Nothing like that. It was funny. Um, so, let's see. Uh, Colonel Thomas uh, taught me to respect our military. Um, a lot of the stuff that happened, like I said, back then would never happen today. You never see a president running and having the current president say, oh, looks like he's going to win, and letting him take the secret mission to this would never happen. Um, so he was very lucky. He was also one of the most humble people that I ever met, despite you know a lot of um, the amazing things that he did. Um, my mom went to high school in Panama because he was stationed there. Um, and so she had to learn Spanish and she went there and went to high school in Panama. And it was, um, she said it was amazing. She had four siblings, but uh, she was the oldest. Um, I used to ask my grandpa questions like, what kind of lunch do they serve at the White House? That's where your offices have where you eat lunch. 
he would say uh, whatever the baby wanted us to have. Mm -hmm. um, and then when the movie Air Force One came out, he laughed quite a bit at the pods that they had jumping while I had planes in midair. He said that would never happen. Um, my mom has kind of a shrine to my grandpa in her room because Eisenhower was very much a, um, an artist. He used to paint and do drawings. And, um, so that's kind of a wonder in my parents' house. But the sad part is that my grandpa, at the end of his life, was so not part of modern technology that he took all of the money that he had made this amazing career and he shorted Facebook in the stock market. So he basically said, Facebook's not going to be popular. I don't think this is going to be a big deal at all. I'm going to take all of my savings and I'm going to put it towards Facebook not becoming what it is. And obviously we know that didn't happen. So that was kind of a sad part of the story. But I mean, it's fine. It's fine. It's just kind of interesting. Um, I just don't think that they make people like him stay. And my mom, again, is, is um, yeah, she's probably my favorite person. And I think it's because of the way he, she was raised. And I guess that's it. Oh.